Hello everyone! In this video I will discuss how we got around Italy so easily using the Italian rail system. We traveled to and from Rome, Florence and Venice using the trains. It was the most convenient and fastest way to get around. Florence is just a quick hour and 22 minutes by train. You could consider just visiting Florence and returning to Rome the same day. Or go from Florence to Venice, which is another hour and a half from Florence. The easiest and quickest way to get to Venice from anywhere in Italy is by train. It takes you right into the heart of Venice and it was a quick 10 minute walk to our Airbnb from the train station. So let's first take a look at how to buy a ticket. You can certainly buy a ticket at the train station. This machine was at the Venice train station and you can see there was a very friendly helper there who spoke English. The screens on the machines also have English options, so you don't really need someone to help you if you follow the instructions. You can also wait online and buy a ticket from the ticket booth, it's up to you. Italy is very tourist friendly. Tourism is a big part of the economy and people are very friendly. If you only speak English, no worries, you'll be fine. Most signs are in Italian and English, and also we saw Spanish and Portuguese in some areas. But English is definitely sufficient to get around Italy, and also a lot of hand signals and pointing helps. To avoid lines and any mistakes, we bought our tickets online before we left for Italy, since we knew which days we were traveling. It's really easy to book online. You can either go to trenitalia.com, which is the official Trend Italia website. For English, click the flag on the top right and choose the UK flag. It is helpful to know the Italian names of places which are similar to the English names, so this should not be a problem. For the high-speed trains you take from Rome to Florence or to Venice, you will pick specific seats from the numbered seating plan. And you can pay using overseas credit cards or even PayPal. Another online option is to use the ItaliaRail.com website. Their website is much friendlier and easier to use for tourists that are not familiar with the train schedules. Look at both of these sites and use whichever makes you feel more comfortable. Then book your tickets, pay, and print them out so you will have them with you when you get to the train station. It makes things go much more smoothly when you do this ahead of time. Let's take a look at the website for Italia Rail at www.italiarail.com. To find a train schedule, just enter the from and the to boxes and the dates you're traveling as well as the number of passengers. I selected Rome to Florence, then clicked on the button that says Find Tickets, and a new screen popped up showing me the options from Rome to Florence. As you can see here, the page gives me train schedules from the Rome Termini station to the Firenze Santa Maria Novella station. Since we were staying closer to the Tibertina station in Rome, I switched the option by clicking on Rome under the Modify section. Here you can see the drop-down list that shows both the Termini station and the Tibertina station and then I clicked on Modify Search and got an updated listing of the trains. You can see the cost is $30 for the earliest train and then $38 for rush hour trains and the price goes up for the later trains. A 9 o'clock train costs $48 whereas just 15 minutes earlier at 8.45 a.m. it's only $36. The trains are all 1 hour and 22 minutes, which is really the quickest way to get from Rome to Florence. You can't drive that fast. It would take close to 4 hours to drive from Rome to Florence. If you click on one of the scheduled trains, you can choose your seats. You can choose between standard, premium, business, business quiet, and executive categories. We chose standard seats. As you can see, they were quite adequate. And the trip is just under an hour and a half, so we figured the standard seats were good enough. The premium and business class seats are roomier and offer much more space for luggage and they're not much more so you could consider booking those if you have a lot of suitcases. They also offer free Wi-Fi in premium sections which was not available in the standard seating area. Business Quiet offers a quiet zone and the executive class offers much more room for your legs and luggage as well as other amenities. But it comes at a price so choose the category that fits your needs. By the way, there are also two train stations in Florence. The Italians call it Firenze. There is the Santa Maria Novella station, which is where we went, and it's closer to the tourist attractions. And then there is the Campo Marte station, and that is in the more residential area. 
Check on Google Maps where you're staying before buying your tickets. If you're just going to Florence for the day and returning back to Rome on the same day, then go to the Santa Maria Novella station. It is the best choice since it's closest to the museums and the other sites you probably want to see. We also took the train up to Venice from Rome. That trip took almost three and a half hours, but it's quite a distance and there's no quicker way to get from Rome to Venice. Of course you could fly, but that just gets you to an airport that's on the mainland and checking in will take you longer than the train, so the train is really the best option. Venice also has two stations. The first one is called Mestre, which is on the mainland, and the other station is called St. Lucia, and that is probably the station you want to go to if you're a tourist staying in the tourist area. The locals call Venice Venezia, so the station is Venezia St. Lucia. Here you can see the train schedules and you can see that it takes 3 hours and 35 minutes from Rome to Venice. The cost is anywhere from 50 to 90 dollars depending on what time of day you're traveling and when you're traveling. The train stations are big, beautiful and clean with lots of stores. This is the Tibertina station in Rome. As you can see it's very spacious with lots of food stores, clothing stores, lots of things to do while you're waiting for a train. There are also machines to buy tickets as well as ticketing offices to help in changing tickets. The platforms are clearly marked and easy to find. Most of the signs are in both Italian and English. Here you can see a store selling snacks, clothing stores, and of course gelato. This is a very big station. There's a huge display board with all the trains listed and the departure times with the platform numbers and also whether their status is on time or delayed. You can see the words are in English, arrivals and departures, but it also helps to recognize a few words in Italian. Partenze is departures, Arrivi is arrivals, Benario is platform, Carosa is coach. By the way, your ticket will show you the coach number and the seat number that you are in. Here you can see a nice bakery and cafe where you can sit down and relax until it's time for your train. Of course, we needed to use the bathroom while we were waiting for our train, and of course it was at the very far end of this huge train station. So look for a sign that points to where the bathroom is. Make sure you have a euro on you because you're going to need it. Yes, they charge to enter the bathroom facilities at the train station, but at least it's clean inside. The train platforms are spacious and clean also. We bought standard seat tickets. As you can see, the seats were just fine, but we didn't have enough room for all our luggage. We actually had to put some of our extra luggage in the doorways and had somebody stationed there to guard it when the doors opened. When we arrived at the Firenze station, that is Florence, there were cabs lined up ready to take us to our hotel. The train station in Florence is not as big as the one in Rome, but it's still nice and clean and had a lot of room to maneuver our suitcases and strollers. In Venice, the train station was also large and clean, but no cabs are lined up waiting to take you anywhere, obviously. The old section of Venice is made up of walkways, lots of bridges, and waterways. So there are two ways to get to your hotel or your Airbnb. One is on foot, the other is by water taxi. We chose to hoof it, but we needed some help with our suitcases. Right outside the train station where you would normally see taxi cabs, you will see porters lined up ready to walk your luggage to wherever you want them to take you. You give them the address and they will quote you a price. You can definitely negotiate. On this trip, we were two couples staying in two different locations with lots of luggage. We came out of the train station together and the porter quoted us 40 euros for the two locations. We bargained him down to 30 euros and off we went. But friends of ours staying in the same location paid only 10 euros for the same trip. They were quoted 15 euros and bargained it down to 10. So I guess we didn't get a bargain after all. The lesson learned here is that the first price quote is negotiable and don't hesitate to bring down the price. But if you have a lot of luggage, don't expect an easy time doing it yourself. The bridges that cross over the canals have lots of steps and there can be multiple bridges you need to cross to get to your destination. Go with the porter, but make sure to knock down his initial price quote. You can use the same train system to travel from Florence to Pisa or to Milan. It's such an easy and affordable way to travel. Renting a car and driving yourself from city to city in Italy is not recommended. 
There are many rules and parking restrictions in tourist areas, and the car then becomes a liability rather than an asset. You might want to consider renting a car to explore the countryside, but not when you're moving around from city to city. One more tip, Sorrento and Pompeii are also popular tourist attractions, but they are not on the mainline Trenitalia network. You will need to take a train to Naples Central Station and then switch to a local train to visit these two cities. These local trains have ticket offices right there, so you can buy the ticket and take the train when you get there. I hope this overview of the Italian rail system has been helpful. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below, and thank you for watching. Bye!